It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War, I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next Emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. But I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne. I used to be a slave, kept under the thumb of the master. The bastard that made me hunt down my own kin. How did he do that, you ask? With the living scar you see on my cheek, this horror that takes no more than a song sung by Master Dearest to control my very thoughts. But now the tables have turned. I broke my shackles. And when I finally find him... I will make the master sing a very different kind of song. Once I was a crusader for the Divine Order. I pledged my life to Lucian the Divine. But the war changed everything. He sent me to save the elves I grew up amongst. I arrived too late. Lucian ordered the use of Death Fog against the Black Ring, annihilating everyone I once knew in the process. Now I'm a mercenary killer, one of the infamous Lone Wolves. And my next target is none other than Lucian's own son. Oh. I was just thinking about someone I used to know. My cousin, the Queen, in fact. A tyrant. I tried to stop her, but things don't always go according to plan. She cast me out to a forgotten island and made short work of my allies, too. Lucky for me, I was able to commandeer a ship and began a new life for myself out on the high seas. Aye, but I hear that the Queen is at it again, and there's something darker behind our madcap schemes this time. If I don't stop her, I don't know who will. All my life I've been a performer, a musician, beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. <sighs> Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> but you can trust me. I've got this under control. <sighs> Step one. 
find out who, or what, is trying to take control of my mind. Step two, make it sorry it ever tried. Oh, don't stare. How would you look after eons in some ghastly crypt? Your people are rather prone to death. Mine are not. Yet when I emerged from my completely unjustified imprisonment, I found them gone. Our culture forgotten. Any trace of the world I knew all but obliterated. I must even hide my true face beneath an ever-shifting mask for fear you savages will attack me. That is how I wander this strange world. Trying to uncover the truth about a history you primitive people never even knew existed. So, still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry, the sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. The things I do to complete a contract. Why, you're looking a bit more chipper. Yes, there you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. The good ship Merriweather, but you can stand at ease there, Private. You do realize you're not in the army here, don't you? Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits, and if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it. See? The collar's function. It neuters you of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. No lesions, no trauma. It was bled by magic. Bloody murder. Looks like someone's hit the Hall of Echoes a little early. <laughs> Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. 
Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow, and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. I thought as much. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Thanks. I just want to catch whoever did this before they hurt anyone else. That's enough now. Ah, oh, there you are. <clears throat> Husband. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not-at-all brat-like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? You presume right. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. I know it. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. You think me mad? She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest hint of a coy smile on her lips. It was one of them. I know it. Never say never, though. Would you put a knuckle in it? I'm trying to concentrate. She eyes you quite seriously. We're like cattle. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, it seems you and another elf engaged in an action somewhat similar to the one I just performed. Only rather more vigorously.
she pats you on the shoulder consolingly. There, there, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. Unacceptable. I've never dined on A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? Come on, please, Lisa. The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? Sick as a leper's cat. From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. There now, just like that. Squeak! Aha! There has been a murder, Your Majesty. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back, the other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. Come on. Please, Losa. A no doesn't become a yes over time, you know. It's the wheel, the wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we are heading east. Burn my beard! That means if we've been travelling for. Yes! Only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy! Unacceptable. I've never dined on anything less than a dozen course dinner. Eh, no indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. There has been a murder. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Ah, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. A most satisfactory answer indeed. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. The very basics then. I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? 
As per your own testimony, you can cook, tailor, and groom. Well, that just about settles it. One of us will get our own. I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. Of course you accept. Mine wasn't an offer, it was an order. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoo! The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and takes your hand, turning it this way and that, examining it from every angle. Finally, he pinches your skin, gently tugging at it. One of them. I know it. Uh, fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Hmm? Oh, oh no, my instinct to survive is quite strong, as with all mortals. I'm not sure why you would... Oh, oh dear, I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How difficult. You have my apologies, human. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Understanding is all rather relative. Take this book, for example. I understand all of it, and yet none of it makes sense. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Here to register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Trust me, with Bishop Alexander in charge, things will get a lot better from here on out. He's god woken, you know. I've seen more appetizing things You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. There's nothing else I can do, Your Majesty. Turnips and water are all I was And if she... Standing at the centre of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it, then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there! Sorcerer! Go and fetch Magister Siwan! We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. 
Subdue her men quickly. If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Happened. Dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You can't see if he's living or dead. You hear a faint thud, thud, thud. He's alive, but only just. No! Oh, what? What happened? Uh, must have been the turnips. Water? Wine, for goodness sake! Oh! The lizard's eyes close as he slips into unconsciousness. No, not the final dark. Not yet. It's no use. Your words do not seem to reach her. The dice roll darkly. They're rolling for me. The young woman lies in a heap on the floor. She's breathing normally, but her eyes are wide open, like those of a corpse. Dark, grayish-black clouds swirl through them. <clears throat> no, no, no. The Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding from a dire-looking wound. Is blocked. I'll need to find another way. You pass through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh, it's you. Shouldn't you be running and screaming or some such? The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. 
Yes, indeed. It's the look of someone that wants to read the bloody book he's holding. Now, if you're really quite finished, I believe you have lifeboats to flee to. Please, I was no more an elf than you are those rags you're wearing. I had a mask, rather ingeniously designed, which allowed me to take that primitive form. A mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools, and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. Indeed. Just as sensible as getting off a sinking ship and leaving a fellow to his business. I would say good day, but it seems quite likely that you're about to die a rather terrible death, so... The skeleton shrugs casually and returns to his book. Great God! Something's pounding on the hull! The marking on the door was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You recognize the symbol immediately for what it is. A warning of death fog within. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply grey. The colour drains from your hand, and you are left numb. It doesn't budge. The door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind. Deathlock! I need to get out of here, now! The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. I said there were other people down there. We... we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. Thank you, thank you, thank you! There's a ladder right over there. You can go straight down. You're gonna be the death of us, you hear? Had to open your big mouth, didn't you? If you can walk, get yourself up the ladder. There's a wait! Void woken! Beardless bugs won't sink the ship on my watch. Huh. Let the games begin. I 
thought Void Woken was supposed to be scary. They who are about to triumph speak to you. is about to burst. We make a pretty good team. I hear something. It's... It's Magister Sirwan. The one who put on this damn collar. Sounds like she needs... She tries to speak, but can only gape as she clutches her neck, trying to stem the bleeding of a gushing wound. With jagged movements, she raises her clenched fist and holds out a length of cloth, soaked with some kind of strong-smelling tincture. Blood quickly soaks through the cloth. Magister Siwan's mouth opens and closes, her eyes wide in terror. Blood pours out from around the bandage. Magister Siwan reaches out to you, her hand flailing. It's working. The pressure is stemming the flow of blood. Siwan clutches your arm, her eyes locked with yours. Something within the ship snaps. The floorboards shudder. Siwan struggles to her feet, clinging to you tightly. The ship lets out a deep groan, then cracks. <gasps> Gods. Ripping the ship apart. This is it. She's going. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity, High Judge Orivan. So the Order's right about one thing. We are track Voidwoken. Am I the lone survivor? Only one way to find out. Voidwoken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn. They made it to shore. Your maker. Prepare yourself. I 
thought these bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. The face is familiar. What's left of it? He was aboard the ship. Giant. My word, this blasted isle is teeming with them. What's that? Yes, I did see how it made short work of the great acorn servants. Quite right, very impressive. But that is no reason to trust it. Giants like that destroyed our forests. They are the very reason the great acorn is returning in all its wrath. What? Dear me, have you taken leave of all six of your senses? You would have me use this giant for a shield? Why would I... Oh, I see. You cunning devil, Quirkus. Of course, if it defeated the great acorn's vile servants, it can do so again. We need only follow in its big, wide shadow and be safe. Egad! It speaks our tongue, Quirkus! Hush before! What do you mean, a good time for introductions? You know full well who I am, you silly old cat. The great Salora, grandest of the... Oh, introduce myself to the giant. I shall do no such thing. You give away your trust too easily, my dear steed. No, we will have the giant march. In time, we'll see whether it deserves our confidence. Now, onwards! Shield! Venture forth, post-haste! The great acorn waits for no one. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright, blood-red color. Could he be...? Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. And a dutiful servant you are, too. The chances are I wouldn't have survived that shipwreck had you not returned to the aid of your master down that dreadful hold. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Nevertheless, one good turn does deserve another, so as far as the whole slave business is concerned, let's just forget about it. You may as well have your freedom. Now then, if there's nothing further... I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but I had thought it quite self-evident I was gazing out over the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories, quite so. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities, and shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. Ha! 
Of course, it's rather specific. Quite obviously, I'm musing over the very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Oh, may the Seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine. I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Jolly good. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off! Black cat. Maybe my luck is about to change. It the cat's eyes are clouded and grey, but it stares at you with acute intensity. Hmm. What? How did I get? Hey, stop following me. Huh? Yeah. Fine. I'm fine. I just... I'm not sure. It's all a little foggy. The cat opens his mouth as if to speak, but his eyes lose focus, and with a jerk he turns away from you. leads. As the alcove opens up, 
You see the same skeleton that you met on the boat before it sank. He's still not wearing his mask. He's leaning over a corpse, prodding and pulling at the skin of its face. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Perhaps... Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation! That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Oh. It's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. It seems the human that stole my mask was rather more resourceful than I gave her credit for. I chased her here, but she rather seems to have given me the slip. Thus... He turns back to the body, prodding at its face cautiously. Oh, yes. An exceptionally common, but exceptionally valuable commodity. A face. A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately, but viciously, rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But, as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Carved? Please. You hardly think I am one of your breed, do you? You have never seen anything like it because you have never met anyone like me. Simply put, I am an Eternal, and you are not. You have my sympathies. Indeed, no one seems to have the good taste to be. My people are rather... absent. At least from this realm. As for the others... Well... There is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. A cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. We were all one. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I fear the limits of your imagination would not do us justice. We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have our world again. Well, that hardly seems relevant. But if you must know, I was inconvenienced for a time. Several centuries, in fact, or perhaps millennia, one tends to lose track. I was sealed in a tomb for daring to be curious about the world. It seems our king did not agree that the universe should be explored to its full potential. Perhaps I should thank him. It seems I was spared whatever happened to the others. I wonder if flowers would be appropriate. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be... Advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality. But being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, 
Which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off. I've spotted something. One must put in due effort if one is to reap the proper reward. Alexander. But wait. He's too well protected here. Any us. We already know the truth, Magister. Stay back, sorcerer, and stay silent. Our Godwoken speaks. We know you've been helping sorcerers escape, Atusa. We have proof. I'd sooner cut my tongue out than lie to you, Alexander. I know nothing of any escapees. If you can tell the Godwoken no more, your tongue is of no use. Cut it out. This can't be serious, Alexander. Come! You should know by now to obey your superior, Magister. Whatever she may ask. Bishop Alexander idly glances in your direction, curiosity on his face. Recognition seems to flicker in his eyes for a moment, but then he shakes his head and looks back towards Dallas. Atusa pinches the tip of her tongue with two fingers and brings her dagger to its root. Her eyes squeeze shut. Drops of blood form against the dagger's edge and quickly fall to the ground. She groans. Stop! My father, may his soul rest in peace, would be disappointed in you, Atusa. To think you would lie to his only son, your bishop, and your friend these many years. The fate of our realm hangs in the balance. If you will not help us save it, then you will help the Void destroy it. Dallas? Yes, your holiness? I believe we're done here. What a waste. Come. The Lizard Magister, or what's left of her, lies in a puddle of gore. She was a lizard, yet a Magister. No matter her reasons, her penalty was fair. These creatures are so prone to violence, naturally, the weaker specimens suffer. Come on, then, Lexi. Pay up. I find I need bread. I want no trouble. This is not your business, Long Pig. Don't let this moss muncher talk to you like that. Especially a cheapskate like this one. Griff already knows she don't like to pay her fair share. Pay up, Elf. No one shorts Griff. Especially not one of you. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. He visibly freezes in fear, stammering a pitiful apology and backing away from you and the elf. Not now. Ah, get out of here, will ya? Both of you ain't worth my time. The elf smiles and bows to you in thanks. Follow me, before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place. A 
saw what you did there. Convincing Burrow not to lay the law down on that elf. Why do you want to help one of them? Then you're in the wrong place. We run this joint. Griff's people. And we don't cozy up to oddballs. Hey, I know you. Losa, the dark-eyed jokester you met aboard the ship, waves enthusiastically and dips into a mock elegant curtsy. Back then, I was <coughs> Madame Josephine Gribbles de Pube, and you were Iffen Ben Mezd, right? Glad to see you made it. Nothing like a nice tentacle slap across the moor to set the tone for the week, eh? How'd you escape? Me too. Did you hear something? When you were in the water, I mean. I heard the same thing. Do you know what this means? It means I'm not the only. Losa's voice catches in her throat. The joy drains from her face. Her eyes lose focus and her whole body goes rigid. She is stock still, waxy skinned, her eyes dark. Greyish black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks. Her head snaps to you mechanically and her eyes lock with yours, dark pupils dilated into great black voids. Light suddenly flashes back into her face. The grey veins drain to pinkish flesh, and her whole body relaxes. Anyway, what were we talking about? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was a shipwreck, all right. Not much more to say about it, I guess. Papa Joris used to tell me, Losa, he'd say. Lo, sir, you ever find yourself in a sinking ship? Follow the rats. They'll find you a way out. Applies to a lot of situations, actually. Vermin tend to know what's what. Ah, oh, it's nothing, really. It's just... I'm just a bit... well, a bit... hospitable. Put it like this. You've never been a host, I bet. That's because you're an infested clump of leaves on the side of the road. That ain't bad, though. I'd give just about anything to be like you. But I'm a... a roadside inn. Red door, flowers out front, friendly lady at the door beckoning you in for half price. Like a god's damn gold star inn for the disembodied. Now, isn't that just the question of the hour? I can't be sure just yet. I'll be surprised if it's a demon. Definitely not a sprite, either. Maybe a spectre, but I wouldn't bet money on it. So, how are you enjoying the joy? So true. And you can stay as long as your heart desires, free of charge. So... You want to check this place out together? Strength in numbers and all that. It does, right? Before we head out, I've got more than a few tricks up my sleeve. So you'll have to pick which one I'll pull out if, <laughs> when, push comes to shove. Lately I've been into the enchanting arts, but I can shoot, slash, summon, steal. Whatever your little black heart desires. So, what'll it be? Sounds fine. So, we're good to go? Yeah? Well, that was easier than I thought. And I'll do my best to stay... myself. Lead the way. As you approach the blacksmith, you feel a bony hand on your arm. Fane leans in and whispers in your ear. If it would be acceptable, I have an inquiry for this human. It is of a... personal nature. And if it would not be acceptable, well, that would render this entire conversation rather awkward. Fane approaches the blacksmith and quietly speaks to her. You can't overhear much, but he seems to be gesturing towards her head an awful lot. Fane's words are quiet, 
but you hear the blacksmith repeat, Face Ripper, in shock. She slowly starts to back away. What is it with creeps like you and Master Niles? I told him to slither back to his dungeon, and you can get too, freak! Fane backs away, scratching his head. It seems that didn't go as he'd expected. He is lost in thought, though. She must have said something he found interesting. Amidst a crowd of screws... And what you after? I found you, didn't I? Red, they said. Red, then dead. Not an attempt, mate. Not if I can bloody help it. Time's up, your highness. Let's dance. <laughs> it, it's stabbing time. Easy now, old chap. It isn't my fault she's dead. God, the smell, though. I'm gonna give you one more chance to shut that ugly mouth. Fuck ah! up, old chap. There's plenty of singletons about. Ooh. I only mean that if you think about it logically... Their frightful manners, I mind the most, really. Well, that was rather fun, wasn't it? I do find it ever so invigorating to cut a cutthroat's throat. Oh, one gets used to this kind of thing so quickly. This is hardly the first time someone's filled some poor fool's purse and bid him kill the prince. I'll tell you what, though. Whomever wants me out of the picture will have to do a lot better if they seek to get the better of me. All those bumblers they've sent so far mark a mere insult to my swordsmanship. The woman looks out on the gently lapping waves. Haven't seen you around here before. New? Well, don't worry too much if you have a... You here alone? She gives you a long look. You keep them friends of yours close, eh? Some of us haven't got anyone at all anymore. Not much in this world someone you love can't make better. Used to be I had a family. A husband and a little boy. We were healers. Source was in our blood. Then they brought us here. I couldn't stop them from taking my boys from me when they did. Reckon they were cured. Maybe even released. Don't know why the Reds didn't take me, too. Now I'm just waiting for him to call my name. Waiting and remembering. Her eyes sparkle. Kind of you to ask. Stefan. He was my little one. Smart as a whip and no less wicked. And my husband, he was called 
Felix. He was an expert healer. Could fix a broken bone in a short minute. She talks for some time about birthdays, about Felix's prickly beard, about the skunk Stefan once dragged home for a pet. Joy radiates from her as she remembers. She places a warm hand on your shoulder. What a gift to think of them. I'd like to give something to you too. A family recipe. One of Felix's best. He'd be happy to know it went to such a, a warm soul. Take care of yourself. You hear? You're a sweet one. Here you are. I wonder what keeps you. Tell me your tale. We are unfamiliar yet familiar. We are the same material, you agree? I am very curious. So tell me. Tell me your tale. Start from the beginning. Start from where you come. I see, I see. Now tell me more. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you find. I understand. Now tell me how your story ends. Easy now, old chap. So this is Fort Joy. A delivery. What a crumbling disaster. Please. Scram, snake face. When another divine arrives, we'll into the kitchen. Don't try anything funny around Griff. I'm watching you. Worse than war rations, these. Cheeky. What's your name? I'm Butter. Nice to meet you. Long enough, I reckon. I'm surprised they haven't come for me yet. Most folks get taken away for the cure after just a week or two. By the divine, haven't I? Back home again. Or to somewhere totally new. Sun, wine, freedom. But those are just dreams. No one can escape from here. She laughs. The sound fills the air like the ringing of a bell. Now, wouldn't that be something? Look, I have an idea. I know we don't know each other very well, but time is so short and... And the connection is so rare. <laughs> if we get out of here, will you meet me again in Arcs? She leans forward and grazes your cheek with her lips. Until then. Nice and slow. Leave him be. Don't make me say it again. Listen, I can help you if you just... Shut up, elf! This clown caught him stealing from my kitchen. <clears throat> Still won't say where he stashed my supplies. Sound like someone you'd let off with a slap on the wrist. Caught him red-handed trying to make off with a second crate after he took the first. <clears throat> Went down like a rent boy when we grabbed him. Easy. Supplies. A crate of food. A citrus in particular. <laughs> he'll talk or he'll die quiet. All I want is my supplies. 
<clears throat> Happy to let this clown die in a gutter instead of my kitchen. Bring back my crate and you got yourself a deal. I know that look well enough. You're about to pop, ain't ya? Why don't you enter a match and let some of that frustration out the right way? Winning has its own rewards, if that's what you're after. Slip down the hatch and talk to Thorn. Put those greasy hands of yours to work. You come to fight. You come to prove yourself. You come to be worthy. There can be only one, and you have but one chance. She scoffed. To prove you are the one. <laughs> Never mind. The one does not ask such a question. Good. Who aids you? Choose wisely. Whether you fail or succeed, you do not fight more than once.
It's easy. A fine match. A very fine match. You may yet be the one. You prove yourself again, and again, and again. A warrior traveling the path of the one should not be collared like a pet. I suggest you to the tinkerer. You are capable of so much more. It's you. It's really you. You gave him hell, did you? She sits at full attention, utterly wrapped in your retelling. It might just be you, the one. You might be him. She clasps her blackened hands before her and seems for a moment on the verge of weeping. Then you're our best hope. You may become the one. She looks around, checking for prying ears and lowers her voice. It would mean everything. The One will prove himself above all others. The One will become divine. You may be the One to save us all. There's only one thing to do. I've got to set you free. Your collar. Let me take it off. What a privilege on me! She manipulates the ring around your neck in several quick yet intricate motions. Off pops your collar, and a sense of relief swirls from deep within you. You hear me now. You get out of this place. You keep fighting. You become the one. And you think of old Nibora when it's all over. Just as you're about to address the lizard, the Red Prince bars you with an outstretched arm. This man is a dreamer. As you know, I need a word with him. You may wait here while I speak. Permission indeed. He bids the dreamer stand up and pay attention, which he does in a groveling and awkward manner. The dreamer then chews and swallows a handful of Drudene leaves before slipping into a trance-like state. He falls asleep. To your surprise, the Red Prince lies down and follows suit. After about half an hour, they wake up and begin to discuss what they saw in their dreams. The Red Prince pinches the bridge of his nose in apparent irritation before turning his back on the jabbering dreamer. You receive a withering glance in response. 
A deserved bit of sarcasm, I suppose. But though this Stingtail fellow may be a less than stellar specimen in the firmament of dreamers, the dreams themselves prove to be quite elucidating. Turns out I'm being hunted by an enemy I didn't know actually existed. The myth-shrouded House of Shadows. The dreamers, though, they're on my side. And they visions of me on the throne. That's because you haven't seen that other world in all its glory. It is majestic, fit for a prince. Oh, I was born with the promise of an empire, and that promise will be kept. But to keep it, I must find a second dreamer, a greater one, a more experienced traveler of the dream world. Bahara is her name, and she resides in the swamplands east of the fort. So, let us make our escape and venture there post-haste. You know, I could tell you all about Swamp Dreamers, too, if I chewed that much Drudenay. Oh, do hold your prickly tongue. Huh? What? But I was... It was... Please, tell me. Tell me. <coughs> Why did you wake me? I was so close, so close. And you smell of burnt hair and barren dreams. But I have the good breeding not to mention it. Supplies? <coughs> You mean the oranges, I suppose. Though I'd guess Mr. Griff is more upset about the Drudenay than the citrus. The Drudenay Griff cleverly smuggles into the prison, of course. Stuffed inside the oranges. You don't think he'd really be so mad over a little missing fruit, do you? No, it's not the oranges, but the dreams he's after. Same as I, though. I have the right. The responsibility. Drudene, it makes you master of all you see when you sleep. The dreamer is not the play actor, but the playwright. It may be hard for you to understand, but my kind, we dream for the greater good. What we see can predict the truth can even shape the truth. But we need Drudene to do it. Before I was caught, before I was brought here, I saw a vision. The Void Woken, slain, divinity restored. But just as I was about to see how it happened, the Magisters beat down my door. This is my last chance to find out the secret, to find out how to save us all. So you see, I cannot give back the Drudenay, not only for myself, but for all of us. My dreams are my gift. They may be our salvation, too.
Blood. And it won't be long before he'll have it, with all his thugs lurking about. They'd stick me in my sleep if they knew. Fine, fine, take the Trudenay. I'll find more. Another way. Somehow, I have to, for all our sakes. Is that thing eating corpses? The creature heaves through lips gummed with human gore. It turns to you with great effort, pain apparent in every movement, and madness screams from its wide, bloodshot eyes. You, 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 you. Quite lost. Quite lost, quite lost. Careful, or they'll cross your wires. <laughs> now, a little query. Where grows the yarrow? Hmm? Hmm? Quickly now, for I haven't much time. Now, now, or didn't you hear me? Where grows the yarrow? Dire, 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 and for you too, if you want to keep your top screwed on and your wires in a row. Do you hear me? Where does the yarrow grow? Where? 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 The dead man, creature, thing, lies in a heap on the beach. Whatever it was, it was too dangerous to be allowed to live. It had to die. You can't leave something like that alive. His obsession with Yarrow suggests he wasn't entirely mad. Perhaps something of his old personality remained.
Griff glances from his blade to you and back again. Everything's accounted for. Now the important question Who's the thief? This griff is nothing but a thug. Don't give up Stingtails so easily. I don't want Stingtails' blood on my hands. Griff would kill a fellow over petty theft. Giving up Stingtail is no better than murder. <laughs> I'm right chuffed to have my supplies back, so I'm gonna give you one last chance. Tell me who you found them on, or you're gonna have to answer to me, my knife, and each one of my people. And your little well friend won't make it out of life, neither. Oh, you must think I'm playing with you. I don't <coughs> play, and I'm over.
She smiles and gives you a long, meaningful look. I couldn't let him kill you. That would be awful. Well done. Sometimes the best way from a situation is the simplest. I hope Griff rests in peace, even if he lives in anger. Well done. Sometimes, the best way from a situation is the simplest. I hope Griff rests in peace, even if he lives in anger. You help me. You save me from a terrible man. But still, still there is more I ask of you. I know a way out of here, and this I tell you. But there is something else. Yes, yes, I become fine. And so much more when... when you agree to finish what I start. Sahela, she is... she is everything. A ruler. A seer, a knower, a child. She cannot, <coughs> cannot be lost here. It is for all our people, for the world. Give me your map. <coughs> I show you the way out. A secret, dangerous. But it leads to freedom. I give you this amulet. You must pass it to the elves who still remain. Tell them Sahela is here. They will send help. Please. She is important. I go to her. I wish you good luck and I thank you for us all. from the den outside. You're too slow! Sahela, you are all right. I am fine, Amiro. I am fine. I know they help us. Yes, they do. It is as you say. Sit, my friend. Come. As you say. As you say. Soon I am quite well again. Then we make another attempt.
I know I trust them well. As you approach the young elf, Losa suddenly grabs your arm. Her hand is damp. Her face looks pale and grey. Hey, listen, I, I don't know why, but, but I think I need to talk to this elf. You mind? She jerks her hand away. I don't... I can't... I, I just need to talk to her, okay? She turns towards the halo. She darts over to the elf without responding. They begin talking in earnest, more quietly than you can overhear. Losa suddenly snatches up both the elf's hands and leans close to her. Her voice rises. You have to tell me. The whites of Losa's eyes fade to grey, then black. The colour runs into her veins, crisscrossing her skin like lightning. She keeps hold of Sahela's hands. It rises in you even now, Losa. Do not let it. You must be strong. Okay, you are yours. No one else is. <sighs> Shut up. Let go. Let go. Let go. I don't want to hurt her. Don't make me. Losa is rigid as a board, tense with the effort of holding Sahela's hands in tight, painful bunches. I don't want to! You are hurting me! Losa's eyes are black. Sahila's fingers are white under her grasp. Let me go! Please! A sinister smile spreads across Losa's lips. She jerks the elf toward her. Chatty, chatty elf. Chatty elf with all the answers. I wonder what your blood tastes like. Losa, please! You, you must not defend her. She waits if she is weakened. We must hurt her to protect her, you see? I bet the elf blood tastes like honey, like nectar, like joy itself. Let's find out. Not herself. You must weaken her to help her. <laughs> it is almost enough. A few more hits. She comes back to us when she is weaker. Yeah, thanks. What's good? I don't. I see it. Let's keep moving. I want to get out of this bloody place as soon as possible. I'm fine. You're fine. We're fine. I just want to get out of here. Let's go. She 
breaks into a huge, childlike grin as you approach. One friend brings another home. Thank you. He gets better, little by little. We are together. We always get better if we are together. Thank you, my friend. But only you survive the passage. I see it. You are free. We must remain. I see your heart. You want only to help. But if you want to help me, you must go alone. She squeezes your hand. I do not forget you. Remember me too. Thank you for your help with that thug. Rare is the human who goes against their own for an elf. She smiles, wearily. I won't forget your aid, friend. Perhaps I can be of aid to you. I hear of no escapes. The only way out is through. Through the Magisters, through their cure. Thugs, I can stand, but oh, I fear the Magisters. Wait, before you go. I am not here without your help. I do not forget this. For you, a prize. I save it for a special occasion, but I can think of no finer occasion than this. Thank you. This is very good. Sahela is all right. I still protect her. She does not die here. She does not die here. Thank you. Do not forget what I ask of you. Sahela cannot stay here. She is too important, too rare. Our people must find her. I am very weak now, and Sahela says we stay. I do not go where she does not lead. It is not devotion to Sahela, it is devotion to all, to the world. She is very special. She sees how we will survive the Void Woken. The dead divine. She leads us back home. All of luck to you. Do not forget what I give you. Take it to the elves who roam the mainland. They come here. They save her. They save all of us. It is good. I see it. You're trespassing in the princess's royal court. You've never heard of her royal highness, Princess Xenthia of the Firelands? To be forgotten? Truly the cruelest part of that dog Bracchus Rex's punishment 
Every creature in the world should know and love the princess. You would be wise to leave here. My princess is already in a foul mood. To have an uninvited guest show such ignorance would only inflame her further. You've been warned. Few who displease Her Royal Highness live to make amends. She's fed up of being trapped in this cavern, of course. She wants the curse of Bracchus to be removed so that she can find a prince who's worthy of her hand in marriage. Until she is free of the tyranny of Bracchus, her mood will only darken, I fear. Her own courtiers can do little to cheer her. And outsiders? Well, outsiders rarely survive her wrath. Truly? Then perhaps the tyrant has fallen, and my princess might be free. Be sure to tell her. It'll raise her spirits no end. Do you hear that? Something's up ahead. <laughs> You there, boy. Did Bracchus send you? Is he ready to apologize? Silence! I won't have the groveling of that whelp Bracchus delivered by some half-wit servant. You he put a curse on me and all of my courtiers, transforming us into the beasts you see before you. The slugs feet. You seem in an awful hurry to leave. Hmm. Perhaps you're not a spy, then? If you're truly a servant of Bracchus, then you should know in which hand he wields his axe. Left or right? Ah, indeed it is. For Bracchus's axe is two-handed, of course. Clearly, you are who you claim. Take this message to Bracchus. Tell him I'm still awaiting his apology and my patience is wearing thin. Now go. Hmm, I suppose the small folk of Rivalon ought to know my tale. All was well after my engagement to Bracchus for a time, but then, then he started to pay less attention to me. He had mind only to play around with his blasted source follies. I gave him a good tongue lashing about it in front of the whole court. But, well, it didn't have the desired result. He transmogrified me and all my servants into the beasts you see before you. I will not yield, though. I remain royalty right to my very core. Get that girl and her head sucker out of here. I, uh, guess he's talking about you? Let's just see about that. Hey, loudmouth, what gives? I'm trying to relax here, aren't I? Whatever's going on with you and your passenger, I don't really need it in my vicinity. You can... you can see it. S see? Nay. Sense? Good gods, yes. You're a mystic too. Mystic? Ha! Used to be a sort of demonologist, though. Was learning the arts, at least. Never did have much of a knack for it, to be honest. Studied under a real maestro, though. Learned this and that, too. Doubt it. Exorcism's a tier three skill. 
I was only halfway through tier one when I got thrown in here. Come on, make yourself useful. There's got to be something you can do. Well, I might be able to tell you exactly what's inside you. It might be any number of things. A ghost, a floater, a lucid dreamer who took a wrong turn somewhere. Let me try something. He places a thumb on each of Losa's temples and one foot gently on hers. Now, let's see. <laughs> holy, holy, holy. You ought to thank your lucky stars. That thing hasn't turned you into a meat puppet by now. Crick on a cracker. You need help. Serious help. Ah, oh, don't I know it. Do me a favour. Get out of here and hie you to the north of Driftwood. My old master was hot on the heels of something there, and if anyone can help you, he can. Driftwood, old master, hot hills. Got it. I don't dare say it now. Not while her guest is listening. Don't you worry. With something like that inside you, Loser, he'll either come to you, or you'll be drawn to him soon enough. Sorcerer! What do you think you're doing, prowling around inside the fort? There's not a Magister within a hundred miles who trusts one of your kind to deliver any kind of message at all. Any other tales you want to try? Go on. I could use a good laugh. Ha! That's almost cute. He looks you up and down. Got a nice marble to you, haven't you? Good. My hands have been looking a little on the lean side. Take you.
Please. <laughs> Please. Healing. I need healing. Of course. Of course. There's a boat that can take you into the dunes beyond. Two associates of mine run it. I can show you where. But they'll kill you on sight if you don't know the proper password. Heal me, and I'll gladly tell you. <coughs> I... I feel it at work upon me already. Thank you, my friend. There is a waterway, a boat. Hand me a map. It isn't far. You'll meet some associates of mine. Tell them Madame Zur sent you, and they'll let you pass. Enough to matter, not enough to stage a coup. The Void Woken have people terrified, not only for their lives, but for the very air they breathe, the sun that shines upon them. Dallas and Alexander offer a solution. People need solutions at a time like this, no matter the consequences. Some people, anyway. No. I imagine not. She's the headmistress of an orphanage in the far north. She keeps sorcerer children safe from the Divine Order. I can think of no nobler soul in all the realm. With her help, we've saved countless children from Dallas and Alexander, and we aim to save many more. You've given me a second life. I won't soon squander it. Or forget what you've done. Thank you. I'm healed. Thank you, my friend. I will settle this debt. The elf's skin is pale as a corpse's, but his face contorts with inscrutable emotion. Joy, horror, and rapture flash over him like the changing surface of a pond. His eyes lock onto yours. It's you! You! Oh, love, they've been looking high and low for you. He spasms suddenly. <laughs> do you know, Dallas? She fears us. Of course she does. She knows what we'll do. Atusa, a noble soul, brave, trying to help me, trying to help many of us. But I was... They thought I could... Maybe I could have. Uh, you need to go. Dallas, after she took me, she did something. My head. I feel like someone's rummaged their fingers through my skull. Get out while you can. Oh, love, I'm wrecked. Can't go. Couldn't move my feet. It's likely to stab you in the neck and shake your hand. He giggles coquettishly, then bellows like a bear. <laughs> Leave! Muffled sounds suggest that this scuffed old door leads up to the fort's main floor. It's bound to be crawling with magisters. Whatever lies ahead, it has been a pleasure travelling together. Let's think twice about this. I don't fancy facing a mob of magisters. We've come this far. Whatever's behind that door can't stop us now. Mm. 
The creature before you stares with sightless eyes and leans from side to side like a puppet without strings. That's an abomination is what it is. I can't stop staring at it. It seems to be even more primitive than the rest of its species. Fascinating. But it's kind of fascinating, isn't it? This can't be it. You let me free. What if... what if I'm dangerous? What if I hurt somebody? What if... I hurt you? They fed me... horrible things. Meat. From... from people. I didn't want to eat it. But they do something to it that makes it... irresistible. Even... You, the one who saved me, I can picture sinking my teeth into you, ripping the flesh apart, swallowing it down. I'm... I'm scared. I'm not myself anymore. I... I have these cravings. I can't be trusted. A low growl. The dog starts to salivate and lick his chops. His eyes go hard and cold. Suddenly, he seems to remember himself and whines. This is... this is awful. I can't go back into the world like this. Please, just put me down! I won't be party to this. It's suicide. Fine. This poor pooch deserves a little peace. This is not justice. Birdie does not deserve to die. No! 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 Birdie starts to cry. He lets you hold him for a moment, his whole weight pressed into yours, then slowly stands up, licks your cheek, and walks away. That smell. I think I'm going to be sick. As the Magister turns to face you, you feel Fane stepping up behind you. Have you seen these contraptions? This must be the Magister freak the blacksmith was referring to. He may have the very tool I need to craft my mask. Fane cheerfully explains that he needs something to rip off a person's face, even demonstrating the idea by reaching over and tugging on the Magister's cheeks. Rather than reacting with horror, the Magister seems excited, very excited. He explains that he might have just the thing. However, having and giving seem to be two very different things. He proposes a trade. When Fane asks what he wants in return, the Magister grins widely. Well, Sugar, now that you should mention it, I do. I do smell something quite delicious on you. Almost smells like a magister I once knew. One I never could convince to visit me here. Atusa by name. Bless you, Puppet. Oh, bless you. And here's the toy you wanted. Fane is clearly not necessarily happy, but certainly content. He gives you a curt nod and stows the contraption in his pack. Busy caressing Atusa's severed leg and gibbering happily, he fails to notice you. Haven't I? Silly me. Mm. 
That, of course, was so many years ago now. I can hardly remember the smell of his skin. is mine. to none.
I'll yield to the sun. Yield to none. I can't remember the smell of his skin anymore. I don't like it down here. Don't like it at all. A bad man found me on the beach and brought me here. But I slipped away as soon as we got here. I just want to get out. The, the noise is out there. Please help me get out. I just want to go to the beach and play with my shells again. But that grate is too heavy for me. Remember the smell of his skin anymore. It might stink, Quercus, but at least there are trees. Now let's be quick. Who knows when the great acorn will arrive? Oh, my God. 
have the will to do what's necessary. Goodbye. I demand entry! You can't hide what you're doing forever! some space between us and this lunatic! Prepare yourself.
comes take you. And Lucian's sword! These magisters are madmen! You are right, Lizard. Well, this human thanks you for your help. He pauses a moment to wipe a thick mixture of sweat and blood from his brow, before continuing. I still can't believe they had the gall to attack me. It's high treason to go after a paladin like that. We're divine order, gods damn it! Our superiors will be very interested to hear this. Our Grand Master, for one. Lord Ken would never stand for this kind of nonsense. Thing is, people on the mainland don't know what goes on here. Never would have believed it myself until I saw it with my own eyes. But we've stood about talking long enough. And this place is no roadside tavern. It's certain death if we keep lingering. First things first. I need to get the lay of the land inside Fort Joy. I was sent here to make an official report on what exactly goes on here. I don't intend to run away now. After that, though, and without the Magister's help, there's nowhere to go but the Hollow Marshes. They say they're haunted, but I don't believe in bogeymen. I was once told there's an old harbour on the far side of the island, and where there's a harbour, there may be a boat. I must be off, and so should you. Best of luck to you. You deserve better than this place. What's this? Guards, what is this prisoner doing here? I beg your pardon, Your Honor. He must have slipped his watchman. You! Who let you out of your cell? Come along. You'll be tried when you're called. All right. That's enough. You're coming with me. Let's not be hasty, Magister. This ought to be an education for all of us. Tell me, sorcerer, what did you hope to gain by interrupting these proceedings? Brother, do not answer. You must run. Run! Hmm. A brash mouth and a dim mind. Just the sort of prisoner who needs our enlightenment. Tell me something. What do you know of our great work? What's the camp gossip about our cure? A magister is not a sorcerer. Our cure is less bloody, and rather more 
Interesting. Would you like to see a demonstration? It was commonplace in the days of Bracca's Rex, but the technology has lain dormant since then. We have Dallas to thank for her revival of the tool that will save us all. Hmm. How to explain it? You see, with this wand, I can leech the source from within you. You'll no longer attract Voidwoken. Rivalon need no longer fear you. All this talk, why don't I just show you? Madam, please do hold still. No! Animal! Beast! Slug! Please! No! Perfection. Here you have it. A sorcerer who no longer draws death and destruction to our realm. A sorcerer cured of the terrible power that once consumed her. A sorcerer healed. This elf has sacrificed her source. Some might say the spark of life within her. But she has done so in the name of us all. She is a hero. I would have loved for you to have seen our point, my friend. It would have made your transformation all the more rewarding for both of us. But the Divine Order doesn't need you to understand. It only needs you to accept. Now it's your turn to repent, my friend. I'm so glad you joined us here today. Even if you can't admit it to yourself, perhaps now you realize how crucial you are to our salvation.
Prepare yourself. Greet the Reaper for me. Lying, hell, Karen! You said this way was clear. But uh, that's what the log said, sir. No one's all for us to be here. Well, the log was wrong, you idiot. I hope for your sake no one will miss him. The Magister cocks his head, seemingly surprised at what he heard. That's so. Tell me, what do you know about Zor? That she surely is. <laughs> that she surely is. Never was known for her patience, was she? If you're taking this run, the kid'll have to go with you. Feisty one, too. Liable to jump into the canal if you don't watch him close. Is that right, Han? It'll be all right once you get settled in. We won't delay you. Karen and I have guard duty coming up. At least we won't be late this time. What with Dallas sniffing around for escapees. Good luck to you. The boy stands back from you, steady eyes narrowed in a wary stare.
Who are you? I'm Han. So, if Han, you helped me out of there, so let me return the favour. You want to get out of here? I've a boat here with plenty of room. Let's go. There's a place not far from here that's safe enough for our kind. It's out in the swamps. Ain't a home, but you can breathe for a minute and figure out what to do next. Let's go already. Came in to help someone escape and got nabbed before I could sneak back out. I'd ask you the same question, but we're a little short on time here. Guy named Verdas. He was close to some people I know. I was too late, though. The Magisters got him. They left precious little of him behind. You're telling me. Jump in the boat and I'll take the oars. A boat? I'd thank the Divine, but... well... The sturdy raft bobs in the canal's gentle current. It might stink, Quirkus, but at least... We made it out. Tree. Good. Better get a move on to safety before anything spots us. He gives you a searching look. Trust more valuable than coin round here. You helped me, so I hope I'm making the right choice in trusting you. You need a place to lay low for a while. I know a safe enough place. My friends there are all in pretty bad shape. But it's safer than out here, that's for sure. You won't stumble across it in the dark, I'll tell you that. It's well concealed from prying eyes. But here, hand me your map and I'll mark the way. Careful where you tread. They don't notice me, most of the time. But I wouldn't love beasts, spectres, bones, even void woken sometimes. Seen things in here I've never even read about in fairy tales. Even saw a winter dragon once, but I make sure nobody sees me. No offence, but I'm safer alone. I'm small. Quick, too. I can take care of myself better than anybody. Used to it by now. If you make it, ring the bell outside and tell Bahara I sent you. She's not quick to trust strangers. I'm heading there now. I suggest you do the same. Good luck. I must say, I was hoping to enjoy a smug advantage over everyone else. Lacking skin may make me a target for mortals, but I am mercifully immune to mosquitoes. However, they are infuriating when they get in one skull. I can barely hear myself think. The cat purrs loudly as it curls itself around your ankles. Thank you for freeing me from that awful place. The air is so much clearer here, wild and free, just like me. And, and I remember who I am now, a wizard's cat. But the spell-flinging stinker left me behind without as much as a look over his shoulder. Bah. It's as if I never made myself a bed on his bony legs, or never chased away the mice that had bite through his books. Oh, so he is. I guarded his library like a griffin would a princess's bedchamber, and look where it got me. I can still hear him now, the crusty old cat. We had us a cruise and six days in the sun, but grave duty calls, so I have to run. Too dangerous, my charge, for you, dear old boy. Let you stay here in jolly Fort Joy. By leaving me stranded among those red robes with their prickly magic sticks, you mean? No, it's quite, quite clear to me that you are much more worthy of an honest cat's company. You just call for me and I'll be there, 
all cuddles and claws at your service. That, of course, was so many years ago now. I can hardly remember the smell of his skin anymore. Oh, but I've told you about that many times before. The hooded man exudes an aura of restrained menace. As he raises his head, the hood falls back, revealing the gleaming bone visage of the undead. Ah, Ethan Ben Mest, I presume. I am a friend. You can call me Zaleskar. Roost sent me to give you some aid in your little errand. You'll find it easier to corner Alexander out here. And this delicious little morsel called Shadow's Eye should help you send him to his rightful place beside his father in the Hall of Echoes. The undead's bony claw pulls an elaborate crossbow from seeming thin air. It's cold as the grave to the touch and enveloped in misty shade. He proffers it to you along with a single rank-smelling arrow. Ah, that should help. Now, run along with your new toys. I've my own errands to run, you know. You should know better than to ask such questions. That we both work for Roost is all you need to know about me. Nought else is pertinent. Indeed I have. I only stock the best baubles, the choicest curios. Take a look. Until we meet again, Ben Mezd. As you approach the woman, Thane gasps. You turn and see that he's fixated on her. It's her! The wrinkled human that stole my mask! Please, I must speak with her. The woman traces glyphs in the air, and you cringe, expecting a barrage of ice and fire. Instead, a bit of smoke sputters forth. She cries to the skies in frustration in a recognizable rail-thin rasp. My lord, I've loved you. I've obeyed you. What's my sin? How long must I suffer? She sees Fain approach and punches her fist in his direction. Her face flushes red. It's her, the one that destroyed the ship to Fort Joy. Her eyes flare with recognition. She demands to know who Fane is, what he is. No one should be able to craft something like his mask. Fane dances around her question and reverses it. Who is she? Who is this lord of hers? She does not seem eager to answer him either. The witch opens her mouth to speak, but something happens. Her face droops and her eyes turn black. Fain, the traitor shall be destroyed. Her eyes clear and she turns her head to the heavens once more. I offer this sacrifice to you. Return me to your side. Make me howl. You won't come between us again. Who is it? 
And why? Uh. What's this? I found something. False faces. Not as fair as my true visage, but better than being seen as a monster. Something has changed. You are you, but more. You are another, but not. You look to your hands, your belly, your feet. Flesh you don't know, molded into unfamiliar shapes. You cradle your aching head, where another's memories and wisdoms mix with your own. Your fingers trace a line from your head to your face, feeling not the creases of the mask, but the porous surface of new skin. You lower your arm, blink twice, and step forward in this new guise. Corpses to warn you away, but still you intrude on our rest. Was I ever so stupid when I wore flesh? No matter, our master was clear. None shall pass. Oh, sweet thing. If you think I'll spill the tale just because you asked pretty, you'll be disappointed in this life and the next. She reaches for her weapon. Why don't you give it over? Might be your walk out of the swamp after all. The skeleton's jaw clicks. Children playing with toys. Bracchus used those weapons a thousand years ago and did not understand their power. These red brats are no different. But our master does not care for the Magister Lambs. It's you, Godwoke, and the other wolves, and it's time to put you down. Your maker.
know where things are. That's the one. You open the chest. I swear. A severed head sits rotting on a stick. The last vestige of an ear juts from above its too prominent jawline. A fly buzzes about its nose. Its eyes open. It looks at you. When it speaks, it struggles to move its impaled jaw. I don't know who you are, but hear this. Don't own the chest. Don't own the chest. Whatever you do, don't own the the chest. Hell, hell, just don't open the chest. That'll help. Also, you look like a good sort. Could you scratch our eyes? The severed undead head looks at you with puppy dog eyes. You're touched and revolted. You lean across and scratch the dead head's nose. Skin sloughs from the nose onto your finger. You shake it off. It won't come off. Pretending to pat the man's head, you wipe your finger in his hair. Thanks very much. That's better. Much better. That doesn't mean you can open the chest. Because you can't. Same old story. Usual story. Hey, do you stink or hang a good and rough worker? I was a professional. Lost my head for it. Oh, as it turns out, lost I oddy. I oddy. The rest of me. We were age builders. We built lazy. We constructed labyrinths. Ruckus Rex himself said the one of the gargoyles was the last haze ever. Right before we cut off our heads. Oh no. Oh no, you don't. The last of haze elder doesn't give away the king's secrets. I list a seal. I list. I'll say nothing, is what I mean. I knew Sarah and my cousins survived the family of Landorth. Landorth! Asaka! Slaughter! So he's not all evil. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We have a code. We are after these builders. We construct the finest labyrinths. We do not give away our secrets. Do your worst. The head closes its eyes. The conversation is over. No More of them. These beasts are damn persistent. This world is ours. Fall, 
die. Pass away. Your you will not be spared. Your time is up. Squash the vermin. Hang the thieves. Meet your maker. They can keep calling us vermin, but we'll just keep putting them down. Meet your maker. Ours. You are ours. We are the many and the all. We were first. We, we are the beginning and the end. We will return. Take you. My child, face me. I don't see any children around here. Don't see my folks even. The corpses of voidlings lie in heaps around you, a miasma of cursed fluid pooling at your feet. Those filthy beasts were like rats. A swarm most vile, but vanquished as a matter of course. If this is all the void has to offer, we're bound to emerge victoriously. We can't get caught up in another battle like that. They're only getting worse. It was madness! Big fire boom, lightning crash! One moment, sun! The next, I feel darkness inside me, then noise! So much noise! Clank, moan, clink, groan! I hid in a stump. I'm not a stupid squirrel. I have much stowed away for hard times. But I saw them! I saw the shinies! Darkness left, then light again. Warm. I saw glints in sand and dirt. Can't go there now. Salamanders. They like the meat. I don't want to be meat. Okay. I hope you find shinies. They make happy.
I am come for you, Silver Claw. Come to rip your fur from your wretched bones. Come to taste your pain. Come to make you pay. Death and light. Come hang from your father's shield. Let him lift you on his shoulders. My father? Witchery is this. Up on the ledge before you, a lone lizard woman overlooks the marshes. Her stare is as sharp as the bolt eyeing you from atop her crossbow. Stand back and keep your hands off your weapons. Convince me you're no magister, or draw one last deep breath. Her eyes go wide with delight upon your mentioning Han. May the goddess keep you for saving that little Lionheart. Young Han told me the story of his rescue. 
Oh, you are most welcome indeed. With one graceful motion, the lizard throws down a tangled mess of vines for you to climb. Come, ascend to the Sanctuary of Amadia. You'll find you're not the only guest here, but the Great Mother provides for all. Be welcome to this sanctuary. The Red Prince interrupts as you're about to speak. This woman is a dreamer. I can see the answers spinning in her eyes. Do rest your legs for a bit while I question her. You're too kind. Red Prince and the Dreamer exchange courteous pleasantries, as if they're finding themselves in a palace hall instead of a death-ridden swamp. She entered to your surprise they next lie down on the ground in a seemingly warm embrace and fall asleep. What follows, though, is far from peaceful. They claw and thrash as if struggling for dear life, caught in the hold of some hideous nightmare. Then they wake, haggard, exhausted. They speak of a vision, Brahmos, and another red lizard. Ah, praise the daylight, I am now. There was death in that dream, chasing me like a hundred hungry lions. But at least I've new directions. When we escape and find ourselves on the mainland once more, I must search for Brahmos the Wanderer. Then I will finally know the truth, the very secret of my soul. Amidst the placid little pond, the face of a goddess lies half-submerged in the water. Rivulets stream from her deep-set eyes like endless cascades of sunlit tears. You feel peaceful in her presence, soothed somehow by an intangible comfort. As you gaze upon her loving face, you find yourself drawn into a trance-like state. A voice seems to reach you from within your mind and from the furthest reaches of the stars. Its whispers caress you like a breeze. The voice grows stronger, like a breeze picking up. What were whispers become words. My children, my children, gone are my children. Dead are they in the cradle I have wrought. A feeling of indescribable sadness assails you. It feels like your heart merges with the spirits, torn together by a coil of thorns. My child, my child, weep with me. For the mother who has lost, weep with me and bathe in the tears of Amadia. Your tears mingle with those of the goddess down in the tranquil crystalline pond. As suddenly as it came, the voice is gone and you wake from its presence as if from dream-filled slumber. The pond now shines with an inner light and standing in its waters, you feel rejuvenated, pure, as if born anew. Amadia's grace, blessings upon this day. The birds are asleep, the moon's in the sky. By the Amadia's grace, what did you do? So close your sweet eyes and rest in the head. This is incredible. In all my years, I've never seen the goddess bestow her blessing on someone. I am humbled to be in your presence. 
Truly we are blessed to know you. If Armadia favors you, that is all I need to know. Go in peace, brother. Gareth, please come back. So close your sweet eyes. And what might that be? Oh, Gareth. He set off to find the soul-forged weapons of Gracchus Rex. A brave mission, and a dangerous one. But I cannot stop you, if you wish to follow in his footsteps. North of here you'll find the ruins of Bracchus's source armory. Nothing in this land can counter the Shrieker's power like those weapons. Without them, the Seekers are truly hopeless. Walk ever in Armadia's grace, child. Look at you! How'd you get that red skin, lobster? Sit too long in the sun? Or do you paint yourself whole red every day because you think it makes you look special? What else makes you special, lizard? Your eensy weensy? Pecker? My, my, lobster. How very presumptuous of you to ask anything of me. If there was a cave to explore, do you think I'd tell you? I hear all kinds of rumors, you know. I, if you went back to the ancient empire, they'd kill you on the spot, or put you in shackles and use you for a rent boy. Isn't that right? Say, why don't we practice? Ta-ta, lobster! You made it all this way. He trembles and seems to shudder with a quiet sob. I'm cursed, you know. Bloody Bracchus bound me here to protect his vault. He has my soul in that jar just there. And I can't leave without it. As long as the jar stays unbroken, I can never truly die. I don't rightly know. This was the Source King's way. Befriend you, then destroy you. I was a fool to expect I'd be an exception. His favor was... intoxicating. That's no excuse. But it is the reason. Really? You... You would? He drops to his knees before you and grabs onto your feet with both hands, head hanging. Thank you. Lucky find. The deity's head and hands are missing, severed as if by a sword. You can't tell if this was meant to be symbolic somehow, or a mere act of vandalism. As you take in its chiseled details, you have a vision. The statue comes to life and embraces you awkwardly with its broken arms. Unable to resist, you're flown away into an endless dark. That shrine seems to have brought me here. What is this place? Ooh, how pensively out...
The ethereal figure before you raises the visor of his highly polished helm. Beneath it, his handsome face is weary, yet his eyes burn fierce and bright. He glowers at you with disgust. You pray not at my shrines. Can't say I'm surprised. You, my most wayward cub. He spits over his shoulder, folding thick arms across his steel-bound chest. You don't recall me, do you? I am Relic, prime among the seven, and father of all humans. Father of you. I preferred you as a child, pious and devout, remember? I called you to follow me, and so you did. Ralik gazes at your upright form, a contemptuous frown creasing his face. Look at you now, my child, a killer for hire. You can't hide. I see the dead who whisper your name as they pass the threshold of the Halls of Echoes. And who's to blame? Yes, you've taken a low road, Ifan, but you're not dead yet. Are you just going to fulfill contracts forever? He stares at you. As you gaze back into his deep green eyes, you feel your whole consciousness following. You notice every shade of stone within, from iridescent emerald to flecks of grey. The verdant pools encompass you. There is nothing else, nothing but Ralik's eyes. Suddenly, a vision coalesces. You see yourself, the bright and zealous crusader you once were. You are breathless, scouting through deep forest. You are racing with a message of utmost importance for the elven people. You make it to civilization. Too late. An explosion devastates the beating heart of the elven city. Ancestor trees thud to earth. Strong trunks crack even louder than the horrified screams. A fetid miasma pulls the air. Gasping on the fumes, you are dragged to safety by a wolf. A wolf who appears out of nowhere. He pulls you free, clawing an elven woman who gets in your way. She collapses, wheezing under the choking dust. She clutches your ankle with her hand, gripped tight as a vice. As you reach down to help, her hand falls away, lifeless. Through the haze, the death fog, you see her dead eyes, black and staring. Through her lifeless eyes, you fall. You see them. Legion. The thousands slain that day, those you were too late to save. The hundreds slain by your own hand since then. Mountains of corpses and rivers of blood. You see the motherless children left behind. The scarred slaves sold to the highest bidder. Choices you made. Contracts you took. The army of the lost gaze at you silently, their loathing and reproach palpable. Encased in pitch black of deadest night, you know not which way is up and which way down. Vertigo spins your senses as you see the consequences of each choice you made, one damning choice after another. The guilt you tried to escape from lies here, bare, throbbing. It was waiting for you here all along, in this filthy chamber at the base of your rotten heart. Your pain pulses, ebbs and flows, undammed. You widen your eyes, striving to see further, but a stinging slap drags you back to reality. Ralik stands before you, gimlet eyes hard now. He slaps you again, harder. Pity won't bring them back. Nothing can bring them back. But you can yet come back yourself. Long ago, you turned your face away from all that is light. 
turn back to me, and you could yet save others, could save all. Relic slaps you again, full force. He stares into your eyes with challenge. That's what I'm looking for. That crusader courage. The courage to stand up for what's right. Rannick punches you full in the face. You feel a familiar sensation as the delicate bones of your oft-broken nose give way. He catches your arm in one vice-like fist and dangles you above the ground. He laughs and shakes you like a rag doll. You feel rage surge within you, barely containable. Feel it electrifying the blood in your veins, pumping through you. You feel like yourself. Ralik smirks and rises to his feet, wiping your blood from his now scarlet armor. That's it, Ben Mezd! That fierce spark of zeal is why I chose you, why I saved you from that sinking ship. You try to hide it behind apathy, but the light shines through. Embrace who you really are. Why did you become a crusader in the first place? You heard my call, my call, not Lucian's. So fight for me. I need you. The Seven didn't abandon Rivlon. We are trapped here, powerless and squabbling. You, ruthless son of humanity, you will be my champion in the world. You are my god, Woken. I will grant you my blessing, fierce wolf. It will aid you on the path out of this place. And then, we will have words again. Rannick steps towards you, solemn of face and bend. He raises his right hand and presses it upon your heart. A surge of warmth and well-being rushes through you. You may have noticed I've tried to help you on your journey. I bless the water beneath your feet so that it would aid you. Now you have the power for yourself. And this is only the beginning. More and greater powers await you, if only you will seek them. Only one like you can wield them. Now go, Godwoken. Go with my blessing. Let it remind you always of who you are. My Crusader. In time, I will ask more of you. But now, your goal is simple. Survive. Escape the grasp of those who would imprison you. Who would break you. Who would limit your true potential. My child, you and you alone must rise above the reach of minor people. But before you lope away, let me ask. You are traveling with company, yes? Be aware. They are not your friends. They are your rivals. They are God-woken too. But you are the one who will be a god, none other. Keep your claws sharpened and your eyes bright and keen. See everything from two sides. Take the wolf that saved you, that follows you so dutifully. Watch him. The wildest animals often turn and bite the hand that feeds them. Oh, and Losa, that pretty little one you think of at night. Kill her now, and be done with it. Until we meet again.
my child. Branches we've returned. Every second we spent in that hellish place was a second the great acorn drew closer. Interesting. You thought it was interesting, Quercus. Do you know what's interesting? Watching an entire world be strangled by the roots of doom. Seeing the giant races fall like leaves in frost. Hearing the screams of... I don't know what you're talking about. I am perfectly calm. Anyway, as interesting as that cold hellscape might have been, it does not solve our problem. We are here to stop the Great Acorn, not hide from it. It's already helping more than it knows, Quercus. The fate of the world depends on our ability to research a spell to protect Rivalon. We need to travel across the land, gathering clues, experimenting with different magics, and come up with a spell to shield Rivalon from its doom. Of course, for us to do that, we must avoid being eaten by the servants of the Great Acorn. And that is where our big, foolhardy shield comes in. <laughs> Quirkus! Quirkus! It thinks it can use magic at our level. I don't know if that's adorable or just sad. No! I am not going to share our magic with it. I don't care how much you like it, Quirkus. I... Very well. I cannot give it magic, but I can teach it how to forge one spell, if it will keep you happy. One. The squirrel reaches out touching your foot with a delicate paw, and you feel your mind open. You can see the forces of magic and see how to combine them in a new way. There. Maybe now your pet will have a fighting chance. Yes, yes, you're welcome. But can we please get on and save the world now? I'd say we should stop to talk, but I'm swamped. <laughs> sure thing, Chief. What's up? One of the gods? Really? Well, look at you go. What did they say? One of the gods said that. Losa huffs on her fingernails and buffs them on her tunic, smirking. Nice. Her face cracks into a mischievous smile. She capers around you, bouncing from one foot to the next, chanting. You like me, you like me, you really, really like me. She stops suddenly, goes rigid, then relaxes, smiles broadly, and leans over to whisper in your ear. Psst. I like you too.
Put it down! Put it out! Put it out! The pig is engulfed in flames, but her skin remains unsinged. Does it matter? I beg you, help! Are you sure it will work? How do I know it won't make this even worse? Okay, but I don't think... Yes, I have endured this for long. I can't endure longer. But please, please, ease this burden, I beg you. It is the doing of Brachus Rex. Kings will always come to see themselves as gods. I should never have spoken ill of him. Many ages ago, we dared warn of Brachus Rex's gluttonous cruelties. We paid the price with these poor kind bodies and the curse of eternal flames. But praise means nothing. I would reject it if it meant a chance to turn back the clock and worship Brachus Rex as he demanded. But bring it to an end. I will trust you in this. But please. Mm, yes. The menacing skeletal guardian looks at you wearily, then yawns. So you dare defy the will of Bracus Rex, prepare to die, and so on and so forth. Let's get this over with. Why wouldn't I be? Every so often, some interloper goes and undoes one of Bracus Rex's curses, and I must murder the poor sod. I hope this brings the discussion to an end. I don't like being roused from slumber, only to be greeted by such banality. I was a loyal servant of the Source King. I carry out his will in death, as in life, and all that sort of thing. Now, can we get down to the fighting? I was enjoying a lovely dirt nap before you helped those heretical pigs. It's dark and dirty, though still a paradise of a sort. I cannot say what nightmares or delights await the fully dead. In a few moments, I dare say you will discover that information firsthand. She moans impatiently and taps her bony foot. Yes, yes, I know he's dead. I am still obligated to perform his wishes. He may not live, but the threat of his curse hangs over me. It is as you say. In any case, no curse could possibly be worse than this droning drivel. Be on your... The Guardian chokes on her words, as if strangled by an invisible hand. What is this place? A tall woman stands amid a field of corpses, some fresh, some ancient. Desiccated skin hangs from some of the skulls, while others fester with maggots. The woman turns to you, bitten lips parting into a grin. She tucks a small bunch of black-red roses into a leather strap across her left hip and, preparing to curtsy, offers you a hand. She lowers herself slowly, deeply holding your gaze. Her hand is slight, her touch delicate. As she rises up to her full height, the corpses seem somehow to close in around you. 
She peers closely at you, a shrewd smile playing about her lips. Ave de more de mere galach. Very good, kitten. Now, I imagine you're here for the same reason I am. She pats the bouquet at her hip. But you're too late. These roses belong to me. Looks like we'll have to find some other way to keep you busy. She bites her lip and leans in, close to your face. As she whispers, her breath, faintly fragrant with a sweet honeyish smell, caresses your ear. You almost forget where you are. I find you rather delicious. Suddenly, her grip tightens around you. She's holding you hard, too hard, hard enough to crush you. Her lips remain locked on your hardened mug. You try to pull away, but she won't let go. You hear a low hum, getting louder. Before you realize what's happening, winged insects pour from her throat down yours. They ricochet around your mouth, a wet, buzzing mass, more by the second. Suddenly, all at once, they start stinging you from inside. The flies sting you and sting you and sting you. After you are almost completely spent, the witch releases you from her grasp and stands back, wiping her mouth. Bloody delicious. Tell me, little man, do you know why the soil here is so very fertile? Do you know why it's the only place in Reaper's Coast where blood roses grow? Very good. Lovely. I'll need more roses soon enough. Of course, you won't provide very good compost, but at least you won't be around to tell anyone what you found here. Looks what's this? It looks strange.
take you. Read the Reaper for me.
it turned on us or just lost its mind. A winter dragon? What on earth is it doing chained up here? from the impact knock you back. But the freed dragon looks sick and pale. As you approach, he stretches his tattered wings weakly and fixes his intense gaze upon you. Frozen tears glint in his eyes. My gratitude for your efforts, friend. Yet I am no more free now than I was in those chains. Please. Help me find true liberty, or sing me to the endless slumber. But of course, that must be why you stand before me. Slain called to the Lord of Death, and here you are. A coincidence. My fate, it seems, is not my own to call. My soul is bound to joyless obedience. Purged of my source by the wickedest of witches, I stand enthralled to her every whim. She has only to command, and my traitorous body complies. The witch Redeka! I was in love with her once. For the smallest slight, really a trifle, she wielded a purging one against me, enslaving me to her will. Now only my voice remains my own. She trekked far underground beneath a nearby tower, seeking ingredients for her vile potions. I can feel... Wait, no! I can no longer feel her dark heart beating within my own. She... She is dead. The dragon sniffs and rakes at the ground with one razor-sharp talon. A thought cannot mend a soul. A prayer cannot heal what has been ruined. You talk to soothe yourself, not me. She... I... You're correct. I feel her dark heart beat within my own no longer. He rises up to his full height, 
peering down at you intently through his icy eyes. But tell me this. Did you happen to find a wand upon her? Slain rears back in eagerness, grasping the purging wand with razor-sharp claws. Before your eyes, the source from within the wand surges into his draconic form, filling him with a light so bright that you must shield your eyes from the glare. The blazing brightness dies down. Squinting, you now see no dragon before you, but the figure of a handsome lizard. A handsome lizard with the same eyes as slain. His eyes still blaze, a piercing silver. A triumphant smile dominates his face as he bows extravagantly before you. Slain, at your service. All like me have such eyes. With them, I see spirits. Not a blessing on this haunted island. You are lucky not to see the desperation that lies before me. If everyone thought like you, this vile place would be little more than a sunny island. Perhaps before we're done, we can return it to such a state. Knowing such a steadfast and noble soul offers help to those in need gives me great comfort. I'd like when you are truly at a loss. When you have no choice but to back down or perish. You will find safety in my shadow. This, I promise. This is an island of many mysteries, of many horrors. I'll learn what I can. Perhaps there is some possible reprieve for the souls who suffer here. Slane smiles at you and turns to leave. He takes no more than a few steps before he shimmers out of lizard form, blurring in midair back into a majestic dragon that soars away. Is me. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your kindness. It's pretty simple. I miss being a wizard, though. Well, I can trade a few of us, but we underestimate the results were horrifying. A double curse. I'm not sure. I really? If anyone can... I'm so... Sending. I've prayed to Amadia real hard, but I'm not sure it's done much good. Still, a wizard trapped in a pit, do you suppose? Well... We aren't really safe here, are we? Thanks for Someone's sending me. I've prayed to Amadia real hard. Oh, what a gr... Be welcome to our sanctuary. Well, hello. May you walk with our Mardia. Oh, I'm a wizard. A group of magisters circle an elf, weapons drawn. The hound barks to draw their attention. Sir, we've got company. Ah, planning an ambush with this scion, were you? Yeah. You can store the mystical elven faff. I was there when... You! I try to give you a chance. More than your divine order give mine. Oh, sir. Her armor! 
the scion twitches in sudden rage, and her armor uncoils as if made of living vines. No more. Oh, Mutt, I've got a new stick for you to chew on. The elf murmurs, stroking her armor as if soothing a wild beast. It is incomplete and made, it seems, from the vines themselves. The spores grieve. They wish only to create, not kill. This is why they grow armor from the vines, do you see? To protect me. It is the magisters who destroy, who separate the spores, anger them. A sad thing, even so. The spores are creation. I find them. Hope they can restore the ancestor trees lost in the war. But the Magisters chain me and send my spores away for study. She gestures at the entangled corpses, vines still spattering gore onto the deck. The ship docks at the mainland before this island. Where exactly, I do not know. But I think the armor does. The presence within wakes. Perhaps then it truly speaks as the ancestor trees do. I find its spore mates and see. You help enough. My armor guides me now, and it is eager to be gone. I hope one day you visit my homeland, where the ancestor. snarl of vines snakes upward from the corpse. After a moment, you realize the gruesome truth. They're not entangling the corpse, but bursting from it. Your mind churns, the imagery too chaotic to bring into focus. The incursion ends, 
leaving you feeling weak and somehow exposed. The vines have split the corpse's chest with incredible force. Thin roots wriggle from limbs and nail beds, anchoring it to the ground. The vines encircle a rough depression, as if something held there was violently torn free. Before you've even registered the cool flesh, the vines lash around your wrist and drag you close. They pulse, tightening mercilessly, and release you, withdrawing sluggishly, as if sated, for now. You curse as the knife lances into your thumb, deflected neatly off one of the rough skin spores you and Thews took from the prisoner. A wet pop behind you, Thews on his knees, his spore cracked and smoking in his hand. Thin sprouts push from beneath his eyelids, his nose, his mouth, his screams choked beneath a single vibrant thistle blooming from his throat. You move to help your friend, but stop short. It's the elf woman crouching behind Thews with her chains broken. She spits a phrase, Kamir Doran. And you are choking. The spore boiling in your hand as gas blinds you. You feel... The Magisters scramble for their weapons, but pause as the smoke clears. How much murdering does You've got more flesh on your bones than our last visitors. Oh. Who are you? Keep a sharp eye. Once the Seeker's dead, we can follow the cart to the Lady Vengeance. How much but if you're fine, that's happy news. I'll be glad to leave this cursed swamp behind.
blind faith. Your courage in the face of danger is inspiring, my friend. Lucian guided your blows rightly. His eyes travel from your face to your feet, then back again. You're clearly no magister. Handsome face coated in dirt, haphazard garb. How'd you come to be here? Name's Gareth. I'm a seeker. I can give you shelter and hope. Ah, good. Then you know us. And you know we can help you. And perhaps you can help us. I came looking for a way off the island. Getting out of here means taking a ship, a Magister ship, and they're not just going to give us one out of the goodness of their hearts. I came looking for weapons, powerful ones, wicked ones, may Lucian forgive me, weapons that will clear a path to Dallas's flagship. Gareth looks about, scanning the horizon, then looks back at you. A moment passes. I can't stay. You shouldn't either. What did Lucian say? Ah, yes. Evil feasts on the indolent. Get yourself to safety and soon. You'll always have a place at the Seeker's table. You come at last. I'd no doubt you'd find your way to us, not after witnessing your bravery. I know you seek answers. I'll tell you what I can. We've just landed on shore. Minutes later, Dallas sailed in on the Lady Vengeance, screaming like a banshee. We had no hope. Most of us were dead in the blink of an eye. She had horrors at her side. Shriekers, they call them. They still protect the harbor, firing pure death at anything that catches their eyes. Lady Vengeance is still anchored there, too. Lucian, save us from whatever plot Dallas is concocting on it. Well, I had a plan. Gratiana told me of weapons that could counter these shriekers. Purging ones that steal source from its host. I went to that armory looking for one of these wands, but Alexander's bootlickers stumbled in first. I found nothing but dust and blood. We've got to find a way to silence those shriekers. If we do that, the Lady Vengeance is ours. Freedom is ours. I can't imagine anyone more capable. Lucian truly shines his light on you. See Gratiana. She knows every songbird and blade of grass on this isle. I'd go myself, but she seems, shall we say, dissatisfied with my recent failure. The Lady Vengeance waits offshore, ready to sail for a righteous cause. Find a purging wand! Alexander. Alexander's shriekers will rot! You do? But that's incredible! I can only imagine what ghoul-ridden depths you braved to find one. I had no doubt. You bring me hope, sorcerer. I'll gather the other Seekers and travel to shore. Meet us there as soon as you can. 
Gareth's voice echoes throughout the Enclave with such command it could rouse a fawn to action. We move, Seekers. Now is the time to resist. The Lady Vengeance will be ours! The others have gone to get us a ship out of here. Hurry on, they'll need you. She smiles and gives you a long, meaningful... I couldn't let him kill... Stop right there, sorcerer. She searches your face for- All right then, you can pass. The Magisters of a Shrieker up there. It killed my friend. May have killed that Magister- Tangle with it alone. Fact, I wouldn't tangle with it at all. There aren't enough of us on the island to take on a Shrieker. You're welcome to try. Just count me out. She gives you a long look. Well then, if we're going to be friends, let me mark your map. See this place? There are others hiding there. You should join them. You're welcome. Once Gareth emerges from the keep there, he and I will join you directly. He may be interested in you. Me? Not so much. I'm guessing that's one of those shriekers. So many seekers lost, and more blood will be spilled before long. At least Han is safe at the shelter. Smoke, blood, and carnage. The Magisters didn't spare a single seeker. We'll find them, or we'll find another way. Kerbin stares at the body of his dead comrade, tightly gripping his weapon in a cold fury. Two Magisters will die for every fallen Seeker here if I have any say in the matter. Not without stronger weapons than these. We'll find them, or we'll find another way. You've come. Lucian be praised. 
Gareth glances over his shoulder, and his voice tightens. The Shriekers keep watch, and their gaze isn't the only one we should avoid. The murderer is here, Alexander. The Butcher's in the ruins, beyond the Shriekers, and he's not alone, as well he wouldn't be. The Order keeps its Godwoken leashed. If I didn't know better, I'd think the gods themselves were your counsel. He reaches for the wand, but pulls back before touching it. Would that I could aim this wand at Alexander myself, to bleach his soul and sear his skin. No. This thing was birthed from a wicked era. What would Lucian say, seeing me confront one evil with another? Go. Take down those Shriekers. As you approach, Gratiana turns to you. It would be a sweet joy to see the Magisters chased from this land. But I fear all I will see today is death. Praise unto the Goddess. Shriekers. I'll never get used to them. Don't let it see you. I see flurries, and the air thrums. Could it be slain? Look! Look, it's him! He has come, true to his word. Praise be! You have silenced the Shriekers and cleared our way. Yet it seems I'm in need of you again, my friend. You have any more miracles in you? We've got a boat ready to row to the Lady Vengeance. But if Alexander sees us bobbing among the waves, we'll be shark chow. So we split up. I take the Seekers to the Lady Vengeance. You go to the ruins and keep Alexander busy. He'll be expecting a breeze. Show him that you're a hurricane. Are you ready? We've got right on our side. A greater ally than any sulking geist or any whinging magister. He takes the news calmly. A moment passes as he calculates the consequences, assessing this new world as it opens up before him. He nods his thanks, then raises his voice. Seekers, we move. You are Lucian's eyes and ears. You are his sword and his shield. Burn the blackness with your holy fire! Nearby. Stay ready. Alexander peers intently into your face, recognition widening his eyes. Be fun. Ben Mest, is that truly you? By Ralic, I thought I saw you at the fort's gates. But how did you survive the death fall? Ah, of course it wasn't luck, was it? God woken. Dallas and Vredeman warned me there were others. Yes, I can see it. But I'm afraid I have bad news. You would only bring ruin to Rivalon. I am the one who will be the next divine. You know, as a child I looked up to you, Ifan. Back when you fought by my father's side. So long ago now. But now, I am so sorry times have changed.
The same reason I do everything. To protect the realm. I can bear anything for the sake of the realm. It was the most important lesson my father taught me. Be strong, not because you are. Be strong because you must, for then. Please, don't make this harder than it has to be. It's not your fault that you still stand in the way of peace. This must be the end of your journey, for the salvation of all Rivalon. Be strong, Ben Mezd. The halls await you. Show yourself. The Reaper for me.
to none. See now, your foul sorcery will be the death of us all.
Alexander is dead. My contract is fulfilled. Quite the mess you've made here. I'm Malady, and you're... She steps forward, grabs you behind the neck with alarming strength, and pulls you close. She sniffs twice, her nose at your ear, then bites, piercing the lobe with a needle-sharp fang. She releases you and grins, running tongue over teeth. God woken.
My mother certainly thought so. I didn't hurt you, did I? She leans back, looks you over, and smirks. So, Godwoken, you're what gets some of us out of bed each morning. What do you make of that? Well, first things first. Dallas's little necklaces are lovely, but not quite in vogue where we're going. There, better. She peers at you closely, a knowing squint in her eye. Tell me, which of those little gods did you meet, and what did they teach you? Her eyes go wide. <clears throat> go on then. Show me what he taught you. Ah, like that. Right, hold on then. She takes you by the shoulders and gestures for you to do the same to her. She closes her eyes, and a warm, soothing sensation runs from her hands into your body. Suddenly, you feel the familiar swell of source within you. Hey, that stings. She examines her hands, where the skin sizzles slightly beneath their newfound aura. As the spell fades, the skin heals once more. Her whole body seems to relax. You really are Godwoken. I'm happy. Oh, how unbecoming. Come then, we set sail, your destiny awaits, etc. You'll have to ask the Meister about that. She's dying to meet you. Melody beckons you to the boat. After you, darling. Malady grabs the vessel with two hands and pushes it into the water. She hops on board behind you. God woken. Wait till she finds out. Salty water mists your face. Your skin prickles in bright, warm sunlight. The boat bobs forward through the water, and Fort Joy shrinks behind you. Tired but victorious, the party made for the Lady Vengeance. The horrors of Fort Joy behind them. They arrived as sorcerers. They left as Godwoken. The fate of this godforsaken world now rested on their shoulders. Or at least on the shoulders of one of them.